All right, so now I want to look at the second session under the review of probability. And this is going to be the definition of probability. What is probability, okay? So probability is a measure of the likelihood that an event may occur or may not occur. Mathematically, we can denote probability by the capital letter P and we can express it as shown in equation one. So I can interpret equation one as the probability of, of observing an event E is equal to the cardinality of the event E divided by the cardinality of the sample space, okay? Where we know what cardinality means from our previous tutorial, okay? So the probability of any event will always lie between the interval of zero and one. The closer the probability is to zero, the less likely the event will occur. And the closer the event, the probability is to one, the more likely the event will occur, okay? All right, now we have three types of probability. This is just the, this, the general definition for probability. Let's quickly look at the types of probability. We have the classical probability. So what is the classical probability? So the classical probability assumes that all outcomes in a sample space are equally likely to occur. And this is based on the sample space, okay? Mathematically, the classical probability can be defined as shown below. So for all elements that belongs to the sample space, the probability of observing any element, right, is going to be one divided by the total um, the cardinality of the sample space, okay? Where the probability of any element in the sample space lies within the interval of zero and one, okay? For example, when a single die is rolled once, we have the sample space, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the probability of observing any element in the sample space, right, will be one out of six. So the six here is a product cardinality. Once you just have to count the number of elements in this sample space, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we just have six here, okay? The same applies with when you, um, when, when, when you throw a fair coin, right? You have two outcomes, head or tail. So the probability of observing any event, either head or tail will be one out of one, two, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at the second type of probability known as the empirical probability. So the empirical probability relies on actual observation or measurement to determine the likelihood of outcomes. And this is based on observation. For example, suppose in an end there are eight blue balls, six white balls, and three green balls. The results can be categorized in a frequency distribution as shown below. So we have the balls in frequency, we have eight blue balls, six white, and three green balls. So in total, we have 17 balls, okay? So the probability can be computed for the various categories. For instance, the probability of selecting a white ball is going to be six out of 17, okay? So here we have six white balls divided by the total number of um, balls, which is 17, okay? So generally, we can say that the formula for finding empirical probability is given as shown below. So the probability of the event is going to be the frequency of that event divided by the total number of frequencies in their distribution, okay? Now let's take a look at the last type of probability known as the subjective probability. So in subjective probability, a person or group makes an educated guess at the chance that an event will occur. And this guess is based on a person's experience and evaluation of a solution to a problem, okay? For example, a physician might say that on the basis of her diagnosis, there is 30% chance that the patient will need an operation, okay? And this is based on the physician experience, even though the physician might not um, conduct any experiment, but based on the observation and some experience, he can just he or she can prescribe this recommend can give this recommendation okay to the patient. Okay. And this normally applies in our daily life. Sometimes we can just look at the weather condition and just predict whether it's going to rain or not rain. Okay. Sometimes you can even watch a football match and based on your observation from the team, you can predict whether it's going to, the team will win or they may lose or they may end up drawing, okay? So um, one thing that you have to note here is that the subject probability will be used practically when we get into Bayesian inference, okay? When you get to Bayesian inference, subject probability will be used much more. But in this course, we will just focus on the classical and the empirical probability, okay?